lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know, or she thought the mystery would be enough to bring me back. driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few hoof prints. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. The power had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. 
The table was still a wreck from the night we left. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house after it sank. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. <sighs> Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan, but I had no idea what was behind that door. <sighs> Just like I had no idea where all this was gonna lead. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. December 13th, 1947. Dear diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's gonna happen. It started when mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. I kept eating and eating. I ate a lot of things that night. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. My Halloween candy was all gone. Mom, can I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. I reached out for her. And suddenly, I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Mom and Dad didn't even look at me. I jumped and I almost got her. I could tell she was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I gobbled her up. 
And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. choking, but I couldn't stop eating. And suddenly, I was a shark! and into the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. I wanted fat, juicy seals. I tore off her flipper and it tasted really good. Onto the sand. 
and the good smell went into an old pipe. Closer and closer. All of my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. Her room was like a museum. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune and misfortune. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife, Kay, left on the house was the pink bathroom. There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. I knew Grandpa Sam had a twin. Yeah. And that he never talked about him. What's that? He is Finch. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. Yeah, I got that, yeah. Yes. Don't want to stream at the moment, of it. So, yeah. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finch. If the thing I remember him, is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom, and he did. At Barbara's funeral, we swore we'd never be afraid again, and he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. Stop! Come! Come. But that day, 
He finally yeah. made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Happen. I'm not gonna tell you again. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. Then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. After the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. So you Mom said Grandpa Sam enlisted at 18 and never set foot in the room again. The passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. 